Hey everybody and welcome to episode 201 of the Daily Dose of Drupal. I am Adam. In today's video, we're going to be looking at part two of setting up and configuring a local host using Drupal. In today's video, we're going to specifically look at how to get a Drupal site installed and also how to hook that up with the Drupal database and create that Drupal database. Before we do that, um, obviously while you're at Code Karate, make sure that you check out some of the stuff we have going on. One of those things is getting your free sticker. Go ahead and follow the icon in the bottom left corner and get your free sticker, Code Karate sticker shipped directly to you. Also while you're there, make sure to check out all our other posts going on, all our other 200 episodes of the Daily Dose of Drupal and blog entries. Um, leave your feedback, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from what you read. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do again is we um, are jumping off of part one of our video series. In that part one, if you did watch that, you're familiar with how to getting MAMP or a local server set up. Again, we're using MAMP because we are on a Mac operating system. You can use WAMP if you're on a Windows, but you're gonna wanna have that set up to continue watching this video and following along. So if you have MAMP installed, you wanna go ahead and get that fired up. So I've already done that in my started my server. So I'm running my local server right now. So once you do that, the next thing you want to do is you actually need to get a full install of the Drupal site or Drupal core. So to do that, you can go to drupal.org slash project slash Drupal. And in here, it lists all of the recommended downloads for the core Drupal. And just recently, Drupal came out with Drupal 7 just released a new version 3.36. Um, just came out here in April 1st of this year. Um, also, Drupal 8 is getting developed and will hopefully be ready come fall. But today we're not going to worry about Drupal 8. We're still focusing on Drupal 7 because Drupal 8 just isn't there quite yet. So what you want to do is I'm going to do 7.36. And so I'm going to go ahead and download that zip file. And once you get that downloaded, it's only 3.5 megabytes, so it's not very large. Um, you'll want to go ahead and ex extract that. So we're going to go ahead and extract our Drupal 7 site. There we go. So now we have a extracted Drupal 7 site. And it, again, it's going to be called Drupal-7.36. You can keep that name, but I recommend changing that to something a little easier. So I'm just going to call this, I'm going to call it test. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it your site name. It's kind of a good habit. So now we have, that we have that, you can look inside of this folder, you know, see all the default files that come with a Drupal installation. If you're familiar with Drupal, this is obviously going to look very similar or very familiar. If you're not familiar with Drupal, um, go ahead and click around, look at some of the files. Um, in our next video, in that third video, we'll actually take you through some of these files so you'll get to learn a little bit more about the Drupal file structure. But for now, we're just going to focus on getting our site set up and running. So what we want to do is we want to get that folder dropped into the root folder for where our local server is looking for websites. And if you remember, we set that up in our last video. If you go under preferences and your local server and your web server tab, you'll see right here the document root or where it's looking for it is under Macintosh HD or mine applications websites. This could be different for you depending on how you set it up. But for me, I need to drop this into that websites folder. So to do that, I'm simply going to take this test folder and drop it right into websites. So now you'll see it's right there. And I already had two other sites set up in the past, but we're going to work up this new one called test. So to see that, we can go back to our local host and just load that real quick. And you'll see it sets right there. It's test. But before we do that, and before we do any configuration, we need to set up a Drupal database and a Drupal user. So to do that, pretty simple. Again, go ahead and go open up web start page on your local. And what that'll do is that'll provide a link how to get to PHP my admin or where your Drupal database will be created. So to do that, click on tools and click PHP my admin. So you'll see here, here's the PHP my admin interface. Um, if this is the first time you're looking at it, don't worry. It's, there's a lot to click on and stuff like that, but there's not too much you actually need to do to get this thing set up. And we're going to take you through it right now. So first thing you want to do is you need to create an empty database. So to do that, go ahead and click on databases. And you'll see here, here's a list of some databases that I've had previously created. We're going to create a new one. You can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call mine test. 
Let's give it a unique name. Go ahead and click Create. So the database has been created. If we click on this database, you'll see there's nothing in it. There's no database tables or anything created, which is fine. That's what we'd expect. When we do the D Drupal installation profile, it's going to populate all the Drupal database tables in here. So we're good there. So after you have your database set up, the next thing you want to do is you want to set up a user. So go under, just do that, go under your privileges tab, and we're going to create, create a new user. So for the username, we want to give it a default name. Um, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to do the same as my database and call it test. For host, you want to make sure you select local. Password, go ahead and give it a password that you'll remember. And then for the whoops, and then for the rest of these, you can keep all these by default except for here. Go ahead and grant all privileges and check that. And it's important we're only linking this user to this one database, and that's what you want to do. So that's why it says grant all privileges on database test only. So go ahead and create that. So we've added a new user. So if we come back here, you'll see we have a test user available to us. So now what we need to do is we can build our installation profile with Drupal. So to do that, you simply come into your local host and go ahead and click on that test link. And we're gonna start with our installation profile. We're gonna walk through these steps. The first step is selecting which um, configuration you want. Uh, I'm gonna stay with standard. Select your language. And then here's where you link your database that we just created on the MySQL side. And we want MySQL, the database name we called test, the username was test, and the password we set up. Under advanced options, don't worry about any of those, just make sure that says localhost, which it should by default. And then go ahead and click save and continue. And now that we'll start your installation of Drupal. It's an install all the modules that come default with the Drupal install. It's about 28 of them. Once that's done, that doesn't take very long we will have a Drupal site set up and running. Before we jump to the site, there's a couple of configurations you want to do. Um, first thing is just some basic Drupal information. We're going to call, fill this in for site name, but we're going to put test site. Name, put that. Username, this is your Drupal user. So this is different than your database user, and it could be different. I always recommend doing the same one. Oh, dang it. For, uh, it just makes it easier to remember everything. So we got username is test and then our password we set. Select our country. And then if you do want update notifications, you can specify those there. And go ahead and select save and continue. And there we go. We now have a site created. So to visit the site, just click visit my new site. And here we go. We have a basic Drupal installation done and site set up and running on our local host. So that's pretty neat. So there we go guys, that's how you set up a Drupal website and also configure that with your database. Um, go ahead and try this out on your own system. Um, the first time you do it, it's a little confusing. Make sure to follow the video. Um, there isn't too many steps, but you gotta make sure you do the steps in, those, or in that order that I specified. But if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Other than that, in part three of the video, we're gonna look at how to set up a Drupal theme and configure a sub theme with um, the theme that you created. Until next time, guys, take it easy. See ya.